Hello everybody, it's Sanier, engineer, MBA, and investor. And in today's first 2023 video, I want to take a look at CTX001, or known today as Hexacell, of course, owned by CRISPR Therapeutics and Vertex. And I was going to this clinical uh, trials.gov, which obviously is a public site uh, with all the clinical trials ongoing in the, the US at least. And of course, uh, CTX001 is part of one of these programs and you can sort of track all the updates. In fact, I just found out that, um, I, I probably shouldn't have known this, but in, in there's a section where you can see the history of changes, right? And if you click on there, you can actually see all the changes across the history since you know this program started way before from enrollment um, to the current status. And of course, there was an update in December 2nd. And of course, uh, if you go ahead and click on compare, you can start reading it. Uh, and of course, the green means uh, these were edited out and the red means, uh, sorry, the red means edited out, the green means edited in. Um, but before I even talk about this, I do want to mention a couple of things. First of all, I think 2023 is all about CRISPR. I mentioned this in yesterday's video. I really think this is the year and I think it starts with this exact program. And that's exactly why I'm starting this year with this program because you're looking at this program and you're looking at, you know, Vertex being the main sponsor, which is interesting because CRISPR used to be sponsored, but of course Vertex now owns 60% of this program, 40% on, is owned by Vertex, which means that the sponsor becomes Vertex, which is major ownership. And of course the collaborator becomes CRISPR Therapeutics, which again was part of their deal over a year ago um, with CRISPR Therapeutics receiving potentially over a billion dollars with, um, with uh, the additional percentage that they gave up to uh, Vertex, which I think is a fair deal. We've covered that numerous of times this channel. I won't talk about this here, but I do want to talk about this latest big update from the primary outcome measure. So they edited out prop what they had previously put and for a while it said the primary outcome measure in this clinical experiment is proportion of subject with HPF over 20% sustained at least for 23 months at the time of analysis starting from six months after CTI-001. And of course, we know that if you have your uh, hemoglobin F levels over 20%, then you are most likely going to be uh, tackling the disease successfully, right? And that's why they put it as a primary measure. But here's the thing. They edited out that part and they edited it in the following. Proportion of subjects who have not experienced any severe VOCs for at least 12 consecutive months. So V, they call this VF12. They created some acronym. There's so many acronyms. It's crazy how many acronyms there are uh, in this vertical. It's crazy. Like I, I, I can't even keep track of it. Literally, they just created a new acronym, VF12. Uh, but nonetheless, this is interesting because VOCs, of course, are required for sickle cell disease patients. For example, you have patients... Uh, that basically have infusions and so on, and those are numbers of infusions uh, per year, uh, and you inject yourself or, you know, you go through CTI-001, um, and then being VOC-free for at least 12 months is now their primary outcome measure. It is no longer having levels of over 20% of hemoglobin F levels, right, which is really, really interesting because... Now we have a situation that we know for many patients in this, uh, at least for 45 patients in the sickle cell disease and uh, they have 45 others for beta thalassemia, we know for those patients they are free of VOCs. And we have that data. We, they've published that in a number of times. And in December, earlier part of this, uh, I guess late 2022 and early part of December, They've now solidified that that is their number one primary outcome measure of this clinical experiment. And of course, going through phase one all the way to phase three with the FDA submissions. At this point, the FDA will look at it and say, well, if their primary outcome measure is to have no severe VOCs for at least 12 months, then we believe, then we believe that this program should be successful, right? If you... you and of course, this is an outcome measure that's defined by, of course, you know, Vertex and CRISPR therapeutics. So it's not like they're only going to look at that line. Obviously, there are a lot more things to look at. But as an investor, you look at that and say, look, did CTX-01 achieve this first line? And the answer is yes. 
it achieved the thing that they added it out before, which was over 20% of HBF levels, uh, starting six months after CVT has version one. They edited that out. They say, you know what? We want to go a step further. Forget about these percentage. Forget about these science-specific metrics. What if the patient does not have any VOC for at least 12 months after going through CVT version one? And I think that's a noble outcome. I think that is a primary outcome measure. When you talk about it, what is the outcome you want for the patient? And for the patient, you want no longer any VOCs. And that's just amazing results, right? So I think CTX-01 is a big story in 2023. I think lots of people are looking uh, at this program and really, really, uh, really, really are excited for this. I think uh, there are a lot of things that are going to be happening in this program. And I think... CTI-001 will be, in my opinion, FDA approved. It's just my opinion, not financial advice, guys. It's just free information, just for educational purposes. But I truly believe that the FDA is going to take a look at it, and it's going to be really, really hard for the FDA to decline the advancement of this program to go through commercial when there is literally no alternative to cure or to treat these patients with sickle cell disease or beta thalassemia, these blood disorders that are basically life-threatening. And they're costing a lot of money in hospitals for infusions, blood infusions, for treatment, for care, for follow-ups. Uh, of course, VOCs are terrible to have for patients. Um, again, there is no competition. And it's going to be really hard, like I said, for the FDA not to take a serious look at it and allow this, at least partially allow it in certain regions in the U.S., for example, or at least allow it under certain circumstances but to decline it or to completely delay it i i just don't see it happening guys but again i may be totally wrong uh it wouldn't be the first time that the fda surprises us right so 2023 is all about crispr 2023 starts with ctx and one from crispr therapeutics and vertex and 2023 will definitely give us a serious serious look into the potential of investment opportunities when it comes to CRISPR companies. As always, thank you so much for watching. Like this video if you have value. Subscribe if you've not subscribed. And I will see you guys in the, in the next video as we start 2023 strong. And I wanted to start with this year with CRISPR, specifically CRISPR therapeutics. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the, in the next video. Have a beautiful day.